How's it going everybody? Chris here, AKA Pacific Northwest Samson. For those of you who don't know me, I cruise up and down the Pacific Northwest and film my adventures both below and above the water, primarily focusing on the beautiful aquatic environment that we have here on our side of planet Earth. I'm no stranger to action cameras. I've been using them extensively during my skateboarding days and also to film my adventures, especially the underwater portions. I've been using GoPros for the last 10 years or so because I truly believed they are the best product on the market. My last major update was the GoPro 9 though. When the GoPro 10, 11, and 12 came out, I couldn't really justify the upgrade because I didn't see the features as being a major selling point and I was happy with the image I was getting from the GoPro 9. When the Insta360 came on the market, it got my attention and I was just about to bite the bullet and purchase one when Insta360 reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing the product. The Ace Pro, the brand new one just launched. Of course, I said yes. I also picked up the GoPro 12 and in this video I'm gonna do a direct comparison between the two. If you're unfamiliar with the Pacific Northwest our water is often green, dark and murky and I know the Ace Pro has huge advantages when it comes to low light conditions so I'm really really excited to give it a shot and see how it performs. In this video I'm gonna highlight some of the features and functions that the Ace Pro has and some advantages plus some disadvantages over the GoPro 12. Now full disclosure here Insta360 did hook me up with the camera and they also have some features that they do want me to highlight in this video, but they also gave me full discretion to give my honest opinion and feedback. I consider myself a very honest guy and my word means a lot, so I'm not gonna lead anybody astray. Now, if you put the two cameras side by side, you'll notice the GoPro 12 is slightly smaller than the Insta360 Ace Pro, but both are very, very comparable. I do notice the larger the action camera, the more resistance you're gonna experience when you have your GoPro on a mask, but all said and done, you wanna get the best image possible and there's a lot of technology jammed in these units. It's one of those uh, necessary evils that you got to deal with. The GoPro 12 has a front screen. I personally don't find this too much of an advantage. It's been on there and I leave it on but I've never really used it. And on the back here you got a 2.27 inch uh, screen, touch screen. I know the previous models were quite frustrating. Touching the buttons it was very unresponsive. GoPro fortunately has resolved that issue. They're not as glitchy apparently as they once were. With that said when I purchased this camera and went to update it, it completely glitched out on me. It was stuck on a setting screen and then it would go black for a while. I was actually really frustrated. I contacted GoPro and they called me back within seven minutes and they talked me through the issue, but a little bit frustrating because I know they said that they were resolving their glitchiness. I don't find that the case yet, but I do have minimal experience with this one so far. The Ace Pro has the front screen. I do like this. Uh, when you're recording, this goes red, so it makes it quite obvious. I have the quick capture set up, so as soon as you click the shutter button, the camera activates and you turn it off just by hitting the shutter button. This is going to save battery life, which is essential if you're spending a long day in the ocean. Now with the Ace Pro, you can't view any imagery from the front screen, but the back screen is 2.42 inches, so quite a bit larger than the GoPro. And you can also flip the back screen over so you can view yourself while you're filming underwater. Now our water is extremely cold. I will not dive in the Pacific Northwest without an underwater housing. The housing helps insulate the camera, keeping it warm and ensuring the battery life is gonna be getting its full potential. So for me, I don't use the front screen, period. But if you're snorkeling in the tropics or visiting warmer water locations, then I could see this being a, a, an advantage if you're trying to get some cool shots and pictures of yourself. The Insta360 has gesture activated features, something that I am not overly familiar with. But if you give certain gestures, you can activate your camera while you're on the water. For me personally, I'm not gonna use that feature, but it is something that many people would find useful. The Ace Pro has a 1 over 1.3 inch sensor compared to the GoPro's 1 over 1.9. The larger sensor is going to take in more light, offering better dynamic range and higher detail, especially while filming in low light conditions, which is what we deal with 90% of the time here in the Pacific Northwest. Insta360 for the Ace Pro teamed up with Leica. Leica lenses are renowned in the film and photography industry. They wanted the best possible lens for their action cameras. When it comes to the adapter, GoPro has these little flaps that come out 
and they'll screw into your traditional attachments. Ace Pro, on the other hand, has this magnetic clip. Once you secure it, it's pretty firm. Always give it a little bit of a tug test. Personally, I like the GoPros. I'm notorious for misplacing things. I can see myself losing this if I'm putting this in the housing, which I will most of the time. Definitely not a deal breaker, but I, I do like the convenience of having this stow and go. One thing that I do hear complaints about though is the wobble. You don't have as firm of a platform with this style of attachment, but with the stabilization activated, I've never had any issues. Now, I'm sure there's a million and a half things that I forgot to mention. I'm gonna cover everything in more detail once I enter the water. So a few things I'm gonna look out for while I'm in the water is gonna be battery life. That's one of the major things for me of most importance, because I don't wanna be filming and then have to swim back to shore to switch out a battery and go back into the water. So we're gonna see which battery performs better. When it comes to the footage, both cameras are gonna have the HDR activated. I'm gonna be filming in 4K, 60 frames per second. I like filming in 60 frames so I can slow down my footage by 50% if necessary. And I'm not gonna do any post. You guys are gonna see the results directly out of the cameras. This is my setup for filming side by side. I'll be honest, it's a little bit janky, but this should allow me to film uh, nice and efficiently while free diving. Holding my breath, the GoPro is gonna be on the top right and uh, the Insta360 on the bottom. By the way, here in British Columbia, it's quite cold. It's about three degrees Celsius mid-February. Cold temperature kills off the algae though. And the algae is what destroys the visibility. So right now, I'm expecting the water clarity to be quite nice. So I'm looking forward to that. Should be a good dive. I'm gonna get geared up, jump in, and check out the conditions test these cameras out. Just to clarify, both cameras are set at 4K, 60 frames per second, medium sharpness, standard or natural color profile, wild field of view, high bit rate with HDR enabled, and with the respective stabilization settings activated. Bit depth is set at 8-bit. GoPro can film in 10-bit, which gives you more freedom while color grading in post-production. The Ace Pro cannot. The Ace Pro can film in 8K, the GoPro maxes out at 5.3. One important note, you're only as strong as your weakest link. Although for this exercise I'm filming in 4K, I often just film in 2.7 as my computer struggles to process the larger files. Same goes for frame rate. Filming in 120 or 240 allows you to capture in super slow-mo, but you better have a computer to back that up. As you can tell, both cameras are capturing great quality imagery, but I find the Ace Pro colors to be a bit more true to what I'm seeing in real life, and I find the Ace Pro stabilization underwater to be superior. I was filming in 16.9 aspect ratio, but in order to do a side-by-side -side comparison, add a crop each clip, which essentially degrades the quality. Here is the true capture. Again, I feel like the Ace Pro outperforms the 12. I just saw two tiger rockfish. I don't see them very often. I'm gonna try to swim down and uh, film them. They're very colorful, uh, really bright red, so we'll see which camera does better. For low light shots before a video is stored on an SD card, the Ace Pro undergoes denoising through AI neural networks. Thanks to the AI chip, denoising takes place on the camera and not merely in post-processing. This saves the user time and also looks significantly better and not artificial. Although 10-bit is unavailable on the Ace Pro, the camera itself is essentially taking care of post-processing through its impressive hardware. One really useful feature the Ace Pro has is its ability to cancel recording by holding down the shutter button. I literally have external hard drives full of me looking around aimlessly with a loaded spear gun. Now I can delete those clips on the go. I don't like to edit on my phone, but I know lots of people who do. Through the Insta360 app, you can access AquaVision 2.0 to further fine tune your footage before exporting to social media. Both shots look great here, but the stabilization on the Hero 12 seems to struggle in the low light. Now both cameras are capable of so much more than I just covered, so I strongly encourage you to do your own research. But based on the settings I use and the features I'd find useful, I'm liking what I see with the Ace Pro. That's what you call a good dive. That's beautiful. Ugh, cold. Pretty good visibility, not the greatest, but to be honest, uh, probably better that way because it is gonna help highlight which one does better in low light conditions. I was better at depth, but uh, up at the surface, I don't know, maybe three, four meter vis. Not great, not horrible. Right now, I'm filming a time lapse. I'm gonna see which one uh, does a bit better. And I'm also gonna do a quick audio test before I wrap things up. Handling the cameras in the water, both felt really solid. I didn't know this, but the Ace Pro has a vibration feature. So when you uh, click the shutter, vibrates when you turn it on, vibrates when you turn off. I could see that being a huge benefit if you do have your camera on a mask because I always forget if I'm filming or if I'm not filming and then I review my footage and I missed a bunch of stuff. That's the worst when that happens. So I could see that vibration feature preventing that from happening. Also that screen on the uh, Ace Pro is, is night and day better compared to the GoPro 12. Massive screen. You can clearly see what's going on, not just a small little image in front of your face. So I really like the Ace Pro. I really like the GoPro too, but all said and done, I do like the way the Ace Pro 
GoPro handles a little bit better on the water. Battery, it's hard to say. I think I was down about 60% on the GoPro 12. DS Pro uh, wasn't giving me a percentage. It's just an image of a battery, but I feel like it was comparable. Maybe a little bit uh, closer to 80, 80% 80 on the Ace Pro. So I think the battery is a bit better. I didn't drain them though. I spent about an hour in the water. It's really, really cold today and uh, both batteries lasted. So I'm happy with that. I just want to pause and take a quick intermission here. I know one of the major selling features of the Ace Pro is it performs great in low light conditions. So I'm having a little uh, fire in my front yard oh with the kiddos. God. Is that the Ace Pro? Yeah. It's like crystal clear. This is the best I've ever had. At least on the screen, the Ace Pro is looking real crisp. I'm gonna do this audio test, review the footage from this time lapse, and you'll see the footage before I do, but I guess uh, you'll be the judge which one you like better. I do uh, notice looking at that small little screen, the Ace Pro does have a more of a blue hue, which really looks nice. It's kind of what you're trying to achieve in post-production versus is that green tinge that we often see here in our water. Audio test, mic check one, two, one, two. Mic check one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Audio test, mic check one, two, one, two. Mic check one, two. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. This is the GoPro without any zoom. You can't zoom while you're recording as where you can with the Ace Pro. But we'll check out the GoPro zoom here in one second. And here you go. This is the max zoom with the GoPro at 1.4 times. Yeah, definitely. For a little action camera, that's a pretty solid job. Zoom in. In. I guess I'll sign off here. Thanks again, Insta360, for hooking up the camera and giving me that opportunity to review your product. I'm really excited to use it on future adventures. If you're looking for a camera, honestly, this is my true feeling. The Ace Pro is gonna be the one that you're gonna wanna get for underwater videography. Solid camera. I think it's a little bit more expensive than the GoPro 12, but worth the extra investment. Peace, love, everybody. If you enjoyed the video, you know the deal. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think and uh, give me your feedback as well if you have experience with both cameras, one or the other. Actually, let me know what you think. Peace.